uh, watching stars when I was a kid, and I still uh, like uh, watching stars right now. And uh, while I was watching stars, uh, I uh, dreamed about uh, traveling in space, uh, visiting the center of our galaxy, exploring a globular cluster, observing uh, uh, a bath of stars. So I was uh, just fascinated by uh, mysteries of space and what I could uh, learn from space. This is the reason why I wanted to be an astronaut, and uh, I feel very lucky that I have been selected. Uh, can you tell us the story of your journey to become an astronaut? And if you would, please include your educational background and, and your professional career as well. When I was uh, in uh, junior high school, I uh, started watching stars. At that time, Apollo 11 mission took place. So I was watching Neil Armstrong walking uh, on the moon. I was hooked. When I was in high school, Mars got closer to the Earth, and I was observing Mars all the summer using an 18-inch telescope, uh, which I borrowed from my high school. I was uh, hooked even more, so when I entered the college, I wanted to make my own rocket, so I chose to study rocket propulsion. Eventually, I found a way to uh, become an astronaut. I can say that uh, um, I was fascinate, fascinated with stars, and uh, just uh, I worked hard to keep my uh, dream alive. Takao, flying in space has mm -hmm. proven to be a dangerous endeavor. Mm -hmm. What do we gain from space flight that makes you willing to risk that danger? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are opening a new horizon or a new world for mankind by flying in space. As you know, the Earth is getting smaller and smaller as the population grows, and uh, we are facing uh, more problems such as uh, decreasing natural resources and uh, increasing uh, environmental problems. We really need to have uh, a breakthrough in order to solve these problems. Flying in space is very challenging, but uh, will give us an opportunity to have uh, a breakthrough in science and technology in order to solve those uh, problems. Also, uh, flying in space may provide us a new home uh, uh, for us in the future. Uh, it's uh, uh, very challenging, but uh, uh, I think it's worth the risk. It's been a while since you've flown. This is not your first mission. Mm -hmm. You flew on STS-87. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how do you feel about this, this second mission? And maybe touch on a little bit of the, the difference that you think you'll, differences you'll, you'll encounter uh, on this mission, STS-123 versus STS-87. Well, I flew the previous mission more than 10 years ago. so. It seems uh, uh, this mission is as fresh as another uh, first one uh, again. And uh, this time, I'm going to fly to the space station. This is uh, a new experience for me. So I'm really excited about seeing the space station and working on board it. Also, I'm going to do several new tasks, such as uh, rendezvous and docking and operating the arm. I'm really looking forward to do those new tasks. Takao, give us a summary of the primary goals of the STS-123 1JA mission to the International Space Station and your responsibilities during that mission. Okay. There are three primary goals on our mission. The first goal is, of course, to uh, take the long-duration crew member Garrett Raisman to the space station. He's going to replace uh, Leo Eihertz. The second goal is to install the first piece of Japanese space station module, Kibo. And uh, the third goal is to uh, install the Canadian-made robotic arm. Uh, during this mission, I have uh, three uh, major responsibilities. The first responsibility is to uh, conduct a rendezvous and docking with my crewmates, uh, Dom Gori and Box Johnson. 
My second responsibility is to operate the shuttle robotic arm. I'm going to use the shuttle robotic arm to install this Kibo logistic module to the space station. The third responsibility is to take care of this uh, logistic module. I'm going to activate it and also transfer uh, items between this logistic module and other space station modules. Um, there are two primary pieces of station hardware that will be carried on your flight. Um, one, as you mentioned, is the first of six components that make up the Japanese experiment module known as Kibo. This first component of Kibo is the Experiment Logistics Module Pressurized Section, or ELMPS. We're going to call it the Kibo Logistics Module. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, tell us what this module is and explain its function as part of the International Space Station. Okay. We are going to install this Kibo Logistics Module on top of Node 2. Kibo means uh, hope uh, in uh, Japanese. This Kibo Logistics module contains eight racks inside. The seven of these racks will be transferred to a gem pressurized module when it arrives on STS-124. And five of these racks are called system racks. They are computers and electronics and hardware which uh, is needed to activate the JPM systems. The two of them are called paired racks. So we are going to carry out various experiments using those racks. They are the fluid physics experiment rack and the life science experiment rack. The last rack is a storage rack. Uh, we have uh, many pieces of hardware for systems and uh, payloads. And uh, once we attach this uh, uh, logistic module to the space station, it will serve as a storage section for uh, various kinds of hardware. Um, the Kibo logistics module is going to be installed in a temporary location. Where will it be installed and why is it temporarily installed there? Yes, uh, we are going to install Kibo logistics module first on top of node 2. As you said, this is a, a temporary location. And once uh, the, the gem pressure module arrives uh, on the stage of uh, JPM, the reason why we are going to do this is that JPM is uh, too heavy to carry all the system racks inside. So first we uh, carry half of the system racks inside this logistic module. So when the JPM arrives, we transfer this uh, uh, half of the system racks uh, into JPM so that uh, we can activate the systems in the gym pressure module safely. Okay. Could you uh, describe for us how the Kiba logistics module will be transferred from the cargo bay uh, onto the station? Yes. Uh, we are going to use uh, the shuttle robotic arm uh, to unburst uh, the logistics module from the shuttle cargo bay first. And I'm going to operate the shuttle robotic arm and the Dom Gori uh, will be uh, calling out the procedures and uh, checking the camera views and uh, communicating with the ground. So uh, it's a very uh, uh, long and delicate operation. It's going to take about three hours to uh, complete this system, that this uh, operation. And uh, uh, we are uh, first uh, um, uh, going to unburst the logistics module from the pair of the bay. And we have to be very careful not to hit any structure inside the pair of the bay. The once the logistics module is about five feet away from the pair of the bay, we are going to use uh, the computer control mode to transfer uh, the logistics module to, uh, on top of uh, the node 2. In the final stage, I'm going to the logistics module manually. The margin of error in this uh, final stage operation is very small, so I have to fly the arm uh, very precisely. It's a uh, uh, very uh, challenging operation, but uh, I'm very excited about it. What does the 